Okay, so today our agenda is uh, to find out how to write an HDL code to control the speed and direction of DC and stepper motor. So before we get started, let us have some introduction and uh, we will see as to how we will implement this DC motor using very long code okay and we will be implementing this using Spartan 6 FPGA kit and uh, the equipments required will be the software which you all are aware of Xilinx 12.1 and uh, we'll be using a JTAG FPGA kit etc okay so before we get started uh, let me just give you an introduction okay as to what is a DC motor so we'll start off with DC motor first and then uh, we will uh, get into stepper motor right so in DC motor there are two wire connections okay and uh, basically what we are trying to do here is we are trying to control the speed and we are trying to have a control on direction of two types of motors one is DC motor and the other one is stepper motor now the difference between these two motors are that you know DC motor has a continuous movement it could be either in clockwise or anti-clockwise stepper motor also moves in clockwise and anti-clockwise but the only thing is that you know stepper motor moves in terms of steps but DC motor has a continuous movement okay so we will be seeing accordingly we will interface the kits and we will see how these two are separate or how these two are uh, differentiated okay now how do we do this how can we control the speed we are using uh, something called PWM which is pulse width modulation so if I increase the pulse then I'm going to give uh, more potential so which means the speed of the motor will increase if my pulse width is less then the speed of the motor is reduced okay so this is how I can control my rpm rpm is the speed that I just spoke about okay so most of the DC motors they are calculated in terms of uh, RPMs or any rotatory uh, movement okay it can be your vehicles or it can be DC motors or any sort of motors we take them in uh, uh, RPMs which is nothing but revolutions per minute okay uh, some best examples can be your fans okay and uh, you know the fans which are used in your computers or laptops which is used for cooling the processors okay all these things right so this is your introduction for DC motor and uh, before we actually get into the code okay the coding section uh, we will look into the theory okay and we will see exactly uh, as to what it means and then we will see step by step as to how the program is getting executed okay so you all should understand that um, for the inputs we are taking row clock direction reset so all these are going to be my inputs and uh, towards my output I'm going to have two types of uh, directions which means the rotatory movements of my DC motor so it's going to be clockwise direction and it's going to be anti-clockwise direction so for this I am naming it as MTR1 motor 1 and motor 2 now to do this we need some control signals isn't it so these control signals are nothing but your DIV okay so this is taken as a 26 bit vector I will show you in the code as to how we are uh, representing this and then uh, we are using clock D and uh, we are using tick 
then we need to use a counter which is 8 bit which will be 7 down to 0 okay and the duty cycle so duty cycle here the range is from 0 to 255 I can pick up any numbers uh, for that matter and I can assign okay so what am I doing with this I can actually increase the width of the pulse so once the pulse width is increased the speed of the motor increases once the width of the pulse is reduced then the speed of the motor is reduced so ultimately I'm having a control on speed of the motor using my duty cycle then row freeze to zero this is nothing but it's representing the four push buttons I'll be showing you exactly as to what are these push buttons in uh, the kit so these push buttons are for the speed so I will be assigning these duty cycle to the push buttons okay fine so now let's get started with the code I will explain the code as to how it functions so we have always at positive edge of the clock okay so which means the positive edge of the clock is taken as sensitivity list okay so you can you can uh, recall the concepts of rising edge and falling edge so here when I say pause edge it means the rising edge of the clock is taken into consideration right then you have something called assign clock t is equal to d8 now this is you know uh, something where what we do is our clock frequency is too high the clock frequency that we use for our kits okay is too high so what we do is we try to divide this clock frequency and the eighth bit eighth bit of div okay that's what it says here when you, whenever it's in the square bracket it means um, you know which particular bit and the number is representing the number of the bit okay so eighth bit of div is used as clock to the program right so next we have assign tick is equal to row 0 and row 1 row 2 row 3 okay now this is performing your ending operation okay so which means uh, the buttons when it is not pressed okay when it is in relaxed mode it means that it is representing state 1 whenever the button is pressed okay then it becomes state 0 so how do we do it so first we need to assign or we need to enable it so we use the command assign enable one tick binary one so which means b is your binary here and the value given is one so once i activate uh, my enable then my next work is actually to work on the clock so the positive edge of the clock now clock d as i told you this divisions okay this divisions you can see here previously we have used this divisions is um, you know equated to clock d so whatever value is here that is actually across your clock d so this clock d it becomes your sensitivity list and at every positive edge which means rising edge of the clock your clock day is tracked and this becomes a continuous loop okay. it becomes a continuous loop and the counter is incremented whenever it has a positive edge of the clock and next we come down to something called neg edge tick now this is where exactly the, the you know buttons comes into picture the push buttons so we have about four push buttons and whenever the key is pressed then it becomes zero whenever the key is not pressed then it is in state one so for this what we do is we use uh, case statements and we take row as the sensitivity list okay case with respect to row and this is representing four tick uh, binary format okay now this represents each bit represents a, a push button triple one zero so 0 means whenever the first uh, key is pressed then you have 0 here the second key is pressed the third key is pressed the fourth key is pressed now the duty cycle okay is given as 250 as I told you previously this is an integer right which ranges from 
0 to 255. The duty cycle ranges from 0 to 255. So I am going to assign particular values okay, as follows. So I will give 250, 190, 100, 40. So based on the keys pressed, okay, the value, the integer value is assigned to duty cycle. So why am I doing this? So that you know I can actually vary my pulse width. So that's my motive. And we need to always take a default case. If we don't take a default case, then um, we have we have learned that you know it gets into an uh, confused state. So which means to in order to track this particular information, it has to have an extra hardware. It could be a flip flop, okay, or it can be a latch. So in order to reduce all those complexity, we use default. So this was about the speed. So next now we will see how we are going to control the direction. Either I am going to move it in clockwise or am I going to take it into anti-clockwise direction. So for this I am going to use reset and direction. So these two becomes my sensitivity list. Okay. So whenever uh, reset is zero, what I am doing here is I am assigning zero values to both of my motors so when i assign zero value it means that both of the motors are non-functional which means it is not functioning next i've used an else so if reset is zero else if reset is one if reset is one and i have another sub case which is if direction is equal to zero so when i take direction is equal to zero the motor should rotate in the clockwise direction. So how do I assign it? By giving motor 2 is equal to 0. Okay. Now these are all um, you know statements where you should try to understand where 0 is given to motor 2. Okay. Just like your blocking and non-blocking concepts that we have seen. Right. So this is your non-blocking assignment. Okay. So motor 2 is given 0 and then whatever speed that we have assigned to duty cycle that is being given to counter right and motor 1 is enabled so which means one value is given to motor 1 so what happens because of this it is telling my direction is going to be 0 okay so which means the motor rotates in clockwise direction okay now we will see the other case other case where i will have direction is not equal to zero okay so in that case i reverse the values so motor one was given one and motor two was given zero so here i reverse the case okay so the direction when it is one then the motor rotates in anti-clockwise direction anti-clockwise direction and we can see that the speed is assigned based on the duty cycle the values are given to counter okay so this is how your motor actually you know functions so we have seen how the speed is uh, taken into consideration with respect to duty cycle and also now we have seen as to how we are controlling the direction the clockwise or the anti-clockwise so we will see the summary here as to you know what all we had studied so far so when reset is zero direction and um, rotation is nil when reset is one and direction is zero it goes into clockwise and then when direction is one it is anti-clockwise right so this is uh, with regards to your code now what we will do is we will try to um, get into the software okay and uh, we will see as to how or we will see the execution steps so once you click on xilinx 12.1 you should be able to see this window and uh, here you can uh, click on file new project you'll find this new project wizard and here you can type in your name of the program
after this you can choose the appropriate uh, work location just where your programs are going to be saved I have saved it uh, I've created a folder on my desktop so I'm going to select that folder and you should be able to see the link coming up here right then you can click on next so these are some of the settings uh, that needs to be done in this wizard your family should be Spartan 6 device should be um, XC6 SLX9 then your package should be uh, TQG144 simulator you should be choosing your iSIM right then uh, your language is going to be Verilog so after this you can uh, click on next and then now click on finish so once you click on finish you should be able to see this window now here you have an icon new you can click on it highlight text file click on ok and you should be able to see this blank page now this is where we are going to type our code okay I have the code here uh, with me so I'll be just uh, uh, putting it so this is your full code and we have to save this so click on save you should be able to see a new window popping up and uh, here you can type in the name of the program so once you're done with that you can click on save before that just verify if it's very log the option save type should be very log then click on save as soon as we done this we do this you should be able to see your uh, keywords keywords will all turn blue okay and uh, that is uh, another confirmation okay where you have saved your program next you can right click and uh, add source then add source window comes up so here you have to select the file that we just created and then click open so once you do that you should be able to see the stick mark which is uh, telling you that the program is added and then you can click on ok So once we do that this type of uh, window appears now you can click on simulation you can select the dot v file left click once then click on the plus symbol here iSIM simulator and you can double click on behavioral check syntax So this is going to check your program if it's proper so you should be able to see a green tick so this indicates that the process sent, uh, syntax check is proper and uh, there's no error in your code right so now you can right click on this click on new source a new window comes up okay so this window is called new source wizard and you need to select the third option which is uh, implementation constraints file now remember I was telling you regarding the uh, UCF user constraint file so that's what we are going to do here we are going to uh, create the UCF 
So once you select um, implementation constraints file, you can give the file name. Okay, you can probably uh, name it a little different. DC motor score interfacing. And uh, since I want to differentiate, I will probably put it as uh, UCF, which is nothing but your user constraint file. So once we have this, make sure there's a check on add to project. And then you can click on next. So it gives you a confirmation. Uh, summary window uh, telling you the association of your program okay you can click on finish you'll be able to see a blank window now so in this window you will have to type your UCF right so we will put in the UCF file user constraint file So I will explain to you in a bit as to what this user constraint file is. Now as you all know, we are using uh, FPGA and uh, we are also using uh, FRCs, okay, your cables. So this needs to communicate with your FPGA and it is associated with a particular number, pin number. So P represents to pin. So pin 55 clock is assigned to pin 55 and similarly you can see your enable is associated to pin 5 then your motor 1 is associated to pin 6 pin 38 then row 0 1 2 3 is associated to 57 59 62 67 then uh, the direction control is with pin 81 okay then uh, with regards to your reset it's with pin 80 so this is your UCF file and uh, you can click on save and click on implementation button now once you click on implementation button we'll have to click on synthesize XST now remember your kit should be connected Okay, so that is when we will get uh, the check marks with regards to synthesize XST. I will show you in a while as to how this is done. We will interface uh, with the kit and I will show you how synthesize is done. Uh, so once you double click on this, uh, it should actually work out with your RTL schematic and your tech schematic in short for uh, technology schematic. It should be even able to check your syntax and uh, it should be next process will be clicking on generate a post synthesis simulation so after check syntax it will actually generate post synthesis simulation so all this happens when you double click on your synthesize XST so we should be having the kit connected after that we will be clicking on implement design implement design will again have translate map placement and routing now as we have discussed these are nothing but you know translating the information whatever code that we have written so th those information is translated it is mapped and placement and routing just like how we have studied in our theory classes so the same process happens here placement and routing is one such important parameter where we place components we try and place those components which are very closely you know having lot of connections we try to place them very close and uh, those components which do not have more intermediate connections or connections between them we can place them afar so this is what happens in placement and routing and this is a repetitive process so which means it keeps going on and on till it comes to an optimum design so I'll be showing you in the, the upcoming sections as to how we implement design. So we are translating the information from our code into the hardware. 
so what kind of hardware we are using we are using your hdl uh, uh, spartan kits the xilinx spartan kits we are using the sixth version of spartans spartan kits so that's why it's called spartan 6 there were previous versions as well so this version is uh, you know better comparatively when you see your uh, older versions and uh, with this code we'll be able to communicate with your fpga just like how i have shown you these pins your user constraint file has pins so these code will actually get connected to those pins and accordingly it starts getting executed so which means what we are trying to do here is we are trying to send the information from our program and we are going to have few interfacing kits okay and uh, to those kits we are sending information from the computer so which means your computer should have a usb uh, connection where you transfer information through usb cable to a usb programmer so USB programmer stays in between your computer and your FPGA kit. Then your FPGA kit, once it gets the information, once the Spartan kit gets the information, then we have to send that information to a particular um, module. For example, in this, we are using a DC motor. So which means we have to connect it to a DC motor. If suppose we are doing a stepper motor, we'll, I'll be showing after this as to how a stepper motor is connected and what connections are involved so we'll be using a stepper motor module there so similarly you know we should be able to uh, connect along with the spartan kit and it should be able to communicate with your other modules so all this happens only when we properly specify as to which pin is allocated uh, and what functionality is being done accordingly if not say for example instead of pin 55 say i use some other pin then there is no information that's getting passed so which means there is loss of information and uh, these are all standard okay these are all company specific you get this information from the company and uh, we follow accordingly the uh, specific pins just like how you have your uh, uh, normal ic's which will have ground at one particular pin number then your VDD at one particular pin number. So the same process is what we are following here, right? So every pin is associated with its own functionality and uh, we will stick to it. So now you will be seeing as to how we will implement design, then the translation happens and the mapping happens and then placement and routing happens. So. Uh, we will go ahead and see as to how exactly these things are done and how once connected how this actually coordinate together and get things worked out okay so we have to select the file here and once the file is selected at the bottom you should be able to see the options okay where you can click on synthesize xst so once you double click on that you get a dialog box click on yes okay then after that you can click on implement a design you should be able to see three tick marks against translate map place and route The next process um, is to click on uh, generate programming file so this connects to your hardware this uh, creates the bit the bit files needed corresponding to your hardware okay so you should be able to see that tick mark there okay so now we will see um, these uh, pin assignments okay so as per pin assignments in uh, the your UCF okay your FRCs are connected accordingly and then uh, we will see exactly how we connect them 
okay so these are your frcs the charts right showing information with respect to pins the frc ports frc 1 2 3 and it goes on okay and uh, yes so now we will see uh, you know how exactly it is connected so one end is connected to the socket the power supply and uh, you know this is the power adapter so once you connect this to the power supply power supply you should be able to see uh the light once you turn on the switch okay once you turn on the switch and the other end of the cable is connected to the fpga kit so that's the way it's connected and uh, once we turn on the switch you should be able to see all the led lights glow so this indicates that um, your board is functional and all the circuitry is uh, is fine uh, it's ready it's ready for operation it's ready for accepting inputs and uh, the usb programmer that you see okay is actually in between your computer and uh, your fpga kit so whatever program that we write gets dumped through the usb programmer okay so it translates the information to fpga so once connected even uh, with this uh, usb programmer you should be able to see the light glow okay so that's how it looks okay and uh, these are you know as i was mentioning your frc information with regards to pin numbers and uh, uh, these are the ports okay frc 1 in your spartan kit uh, is connected to your dip switch pins in the dac board okay uh, those are your dip switches then uh, frc7 is connected to keys okay frc7 from your board is connected to the port okay called keys this is actually your gpio general purpose input output okay and your frc9 from your board is uh, connected to the dc module dc motor module okay so you should be able to see program succeeded uh, after which you know this uh, becomes fully functional okay so that is the information that you should be able to see program succeeded okay so when you turn on the switch uh the motor should uh, you know the dc motor should turn on and you can off it as well with the same switch okay and uh, the second switch is for the clockwise and anti clockwise direction right and uh, you see the push buttons at the bottom the four black push buttons so these are for your speed control as we had discussed in the program the speed control of your motor okay so this is how your dc motor functions we have written the code we have dumped it okay uh, into the kit and uh, once we have the confirmation on the software as i showed you as we have program succeeded okay so this is the code for uh, your verilog code okay verilog uh, module for the speed control and direction of your stepper motor 
so the procedure remains the same just like how we discussed for dc motor okay so we will go ahead and try and understand the concept involved with uh, the stepper motor so this is your block diagram where you have towards the input as clock reset uh, direction row and towards the output you have d out so d out is of four bits there are few more other signals that are involved here which is div clock okay clock division which is your 26 bit vector just like how we saw in uh, uh, you know the dc motor okay and we have a register uh, which is of 4 bit now we will go ahead with the uh, code explanation so the first section is going to be speed control okay and then we will see how the direction is managed okay so always at positive edge so which means uh, your rising edge of the clock is considered okay and uh, there's an increment done to the divisions of clock okay which is uh, div clock plus one then after that uh, what we do is we take row and div clock as sensitivity list then we use uh, uh, cases okay we use case statements here with respect to row okay so what we do here just like so just like we saw in uh, dc motor okay so here we'll be using 00011011 okay and accordingly the speeds are assigned based on the clock division okay the frequency divided and uh, this in turn will control the speed of the motor so you can see here 21 19 17 15 then by default i am giving back to 21 okay so as i mentioned in the previous uh, uh, you know sections that if in case we don't give this default case then it gets we need to have an extra hardware uh, it can be either a flip flop or it can be um, you know a latch to maintain the value so in order to get this confusion cleared uh, you know within the programming structure we use default so case had started here so we will end case and we will uh, end this particular section next we will see how the direction is controlled okay so you have always at uh, positive edge okay so you have two parameters here okay uh, your uh, uh, initialization of clock and then your direction okay that is your int clock and direction so if reset is equal to zero okay if reset is equal to zero let me give a random value okay let me give uh, a four bit of binary form and the value is one zero zero one i give this value to register okay now if direction is equal to zero so then i will experience uh, the clockwise rotation okay clockwise rotation of the motor now as you all know okay we are discussing about the stepper motor so in the stepper motor unlike your dc motor as i mentioned previously it moves stepwise so it can be either in clockwise or it can be in anti clockwise but it it doesn't have a free movement compared to your dc motor so that's the difference then here you have uh, register is equal to register of 0 bit comma register 3 is to 1 so what is going to happen when we see this uh, flower brackets is that concatenation operation happens okay and uh, if direction is equal to 1 this is for direction equal to 0 if direction is equal to 1 then i'm going to use this format of concatenation so which means when direction is 0 i'm going to use clockwise when direction is 1 i'm going to use anti clockwise direction now how does this function how does this uh, concatenation operation happen so we will see it here so basically uh, since we had taken 1001 okay so your registers are broken up into the third bit second bit first bit and the zero zeroth bit so accordingly the values are stored 1 0 0 1 now i have used this command line right so register is equal to register 0 comma register 3 is to 1 so here first the value which is in 0 bit that is taken okay so if you can see here the value of 0 bit is taken and then the values of 3 to 1 are taken 
so an appending you know operation is happening so this is in turn called your concatenation so if you compare the values with your data 1001 and your final value 1100 you can see that um, there's a shift that is happening there's a circular right shift circular right shift that has happened okay now we'll go with the next case okay the next case is for this else right so we saw register 2 is to 0 comma register 3 so in this case how is it going to work so it's going to be the reverse case so here register 3 2 1 0 as usual i'm going to have 1 0 0 1 and um, the command that i'm going to give or the instruction that i'm going to give is, is register 2 is to 0 comma register 3 so here also we will have concatenation operation okay but just that the values of 2 1 0 are taken first and then the value of register 3 so 2 1 0 and then 3 so if we compute the value it becomes 0 0 1 1 so when you compare the values which was given and the final value in the register we can see that a circular shift has happened uh, but this time towards the left okay so this is how your stepper motor actually functions now that we have seen you know the the functionality of uh, your code okay the procedure for execution remains the same just like how i showed for dc motor we will, we will go into file new project and you know, and uh, uh, putting in the main code and once we have the main code then we go with uh, behavioral check syntax then once that is done then we go with the ucf file okay so once we have the ucf file we will save it once we save it then we will go into um, synthesis then we will go into you know the other um, mapping placement and routing all these options then we will click on generate uh, file bit okay so we will discuss about it i will i will show you the video as to how exactly you know it uh, functions okay so i think uh, you would have understood the concept of uh, stepper motor program right as to how uh, it's uh, functioning and uh, right now you know we will see as to how the programming is done okay so as usual as i mentioned previously we will be uh, you know going into file and uh, new project okay then you can type in the name of the program you can uh, select uh, the target folder okay name the folder so that it will be easy for you to find out and uh, take the files from there for further reference so once you have named you can click on ok and then uh, you can uh, name the file there as to what you want your file name to be so once uh, that is done you can click on uh, next okay stepper motor then uh, We'll click on next so once this is done just verify your um, you know configurations here the settings okay as i told you it should be uh, 6s lx9 okay the family spartan 6 and then click on finish say yes and then this is the kind of screen that you would see click on new then uh, text file ok then uh, you can type the program i i have it here so i will i'll be putting it in there okay so i'll be taking the complete program and uh, i'll paste it there right and then uh, next thing is for us to save it look for the appropriate uh, 
type and uh, file name so file name we are going to name it as we'll name it as stepper one click on ok you should be able to see the colors color change in your text right then uh, right click add source select click on open you should get the confirmation and click on ok fine so that's your program there now and uh, now we can actually go ahead and uh, check for the behavioral syntax select the file come at the bottom and uh, at the bottom click on the plus symbol and then double click on uh, behavioral check syntax so you should be able to see a green tick there referring that it's correct then right click new source so this is where we are going to add the UCF file and uh, put the name of the file UCF remember is your user constraint file corresponding to pin numbers and uh, you know the FRC so it maps between them pin numbers of your uh, FPGA so after naming click on next and then finish so this is where you're going to type your uh, UCF uh, or your constraint file so I, I, I actually have it so I will open it I'll uh, take it then I'll put it up there silence the UCF window yes I'll be pasting it there and uh, now I can save it and click on save okay so the next one is um, I will uh, get into implementation and then synthesize XST okay this is a reputation uh, this is for your uh, understanding after synthesize XST um, you can actually click on uh, implement design okay so translate map placement routing you should be able to see three tick marks there and uh, after that you'll be clicking on generate uh, programming file so there you go I'll click on uh, that programming file and uh, you should be able to see uh, another option there you know these are your FRC information as we have seen the programmer USB programmer we will be using FRC 1 to the DIP switch the dip switch okay here we will be using the first four switches okay the first one to turn on off and then the speed then uh, FRC 9 is actually used to connect to the stepper motor module okay so once this is done this is how your setup looks fine so you can click double click on uh, the target device you will get a new window okay click OK and then right click here and once you right click here to this box you can uh, click no and then towards the LHS click on the FPGA option the new window press OK and you should be able to see that uh, the identify is succeeded okay then right click on Xilinx icon select uh, assign new configuration then go to your 
file and search for the bit file then click on no to the new box that appears so you should be able to see that bit file there and uh, right click again on and click on program select apply and ok so you should be able to see program succeeded right now we will see the first switch is used for uh, turning on and turning off uh, the motor okay so you can see it you can take a close look at it as to how the stepper motor is rotating and uh, when I go with the uh, you know off state your motor stops rotating okay then the second switch uh, actually corresponds to the clockwise or anti-clockwise direction okay so accordingly you can see the changes happening right then the third switch and fourth switch correspond